The point I'm getting at is that Doomsayers and Snap. His uh, secondary deck is very nicely teched, even more. I mean, based on that, it's just maths. He literally cannot lose. Well, we're going to find out because our game is getting underway. Our fourth match here for Europe. We'll have one more that's after this one. But right now, I'm looking at Pavel's hand with a Conjurer's Calling and with a coin coming up. And you love to see that. He's thinking the exact same thing. When you are on the coin, pretty generally, you are looking to go for Mountain Giant into Conjurer's Calling on turn four. Five, or if you're really lucky, turn four. After going turn three, uh, Arcane Intellect or Banana Buffoon to fill up your hand to get that Mountain Giant nice. So Doomsayer in this matchup uh, plays a lot to uh, how the old handlock or even the same Warlock thing. mirror matches really play out, yeah. where the goal of that deck is to fill up your hand, play a big giant, take advantage of the fact that you have excess cards and can snowball that board pressure. Um, does that play out the same way in this matchup to you? Pretty much. I would say it plays out the same, but to a exaggerated degree than it did in the handlock mirrors, where with both handlock, even lock, cube lock, whatever it may have been, getting the first giant down was very important because you could start attacking face, you could then protect it with other minions, or you could um, go for cube in the cube lock variant. Things like that made it a lot easier. In this matchup, you have Conjurer's Calling, which is basically a carnivorous cube effect, but for three mana, and you can cast it twice. And it activates immediately. Right, exactly. So you lose the benefit of, you know, potentially like setting up a big play of board tension yeah. by instead just exploding everything on the board and saying, deal with this. Right. And uh, to, to relate that point back to the Doomsayers, the point of Doomsayer is you can play it preemptively, even if your opponent has nothing on board. If you've counted their hand size correctly, counted their mana cost, and figured out they can play giant next turn. So I'm just going to throw down the Doomsayer, stop them from being able to do that, and then I have the initiative to play the first Giant. And I feel like this plan works really well in tandem uh, when you have Archmage Antonitis in your deck. I feel like the fact that you're preserving things mm. instead of expending them and working towards that later game point gives you the ability to perhaps style out the board, get an, uh, an Archmage active, and use that as a point of leverage instead. It's an interesting point. Uh, I have to be honest, the, the list I'm playing on ladder does not have Archmage Antonidas, so I haven't really tested it too much uh, in the mirror. Um, I imagine it's generally not what you're looking to do primarily. It's not your uh, premier game plan because these games can be so explosive in the early turns with your Mountain Giants and Conjurer's Callings coming down early on. But if you do get those kind of games where neither player draws Conjurer's Calling or neither player draws a Giant, I imagine it could be a pretty good finisher. I've tended to see it definitely as the backup plan, right? as the support uh, case for it. However, in my times using it, I have found it to be extremely powerful. Happy to see that card back. That, to me, is the card that speaks to me in Mage. Antonidas. Yeah, Archmage Antonidas. It's a very, very cool card. I do often require his assistance. Haha. <laughs> 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 -ha. <laughs> is another thing so he says. So it's a joke, apparently. <laughs> Never mind the uh, the mundaneness in your voice. Please. That's not what made it funny. It was the ha-ha and it being timely with Archmage Antonitis. It was a reference that people understood. I love those. I understood their reference. <laughs> As now for Pavel, things are getting a lot more scary and I think we are very likely to see a Doomsayer come down. Yeah, one of the, one of the dangers I have found with using Doomsayer as a reactive measure in the matchup um, was that my opponents, after they had Conjurers calling their own giant, and then I would try to freeze and play Doomsayer. My opponent just immediately conjures calling yes. my Doomsayer, and I went, oh, I am stupid. <laughs> it does just blow a minion up. Yep. And so, yeah, I have a chance at getting a Doomsayer again, but probably not. I, I feel like it needs to be used as not. a proactive tool, which yep. to me makes this one of the most difficult cards in the deck I'm to so use. Yeah, I think this was perfectly reflect. sequenced so far from Pavel because he realized on turn four, Orange's Giant would have cost five mana, which, to be fair, would still have been playable with an elemental evocation, uh, but I don't think he wants to play around that two-card combo, especially when you are unlikely to even keep Mountain Giant on the coin. Yeah, I would or say. without coin, rather. Uh, without the coin, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He also has Ray of Frost in the Mountain Giant. I'm sorry, Ray of Frost and Doomsayer. So if Orange wanted to conjure his calling the Mountain Giant, obviously he couldn't because they're Doomsayer. Good point. Yeah. But he has to use the front half on a Doomsayer, yes. which really mitigates the amount of damage pressure at that point as well. I think he just had a lot of reasons for Orange to not play it. Fine. And I think Orange would have agreed, honestly, even if he had had it available. Observe and reflect. 
And so clearly here we're seeing Orange struggling with how to take this turn. Ooh, looks like he's thinking just throwing down the mirror image. Is he even able to kill it if he wanted to? Well, something I was thinking about was... Yeah, he wouldn't want to do that. So it was banana, banana, double rare frost, but you're yeah. missing a mana at that point. So I think uh, I think Orange was considering having a mana cyclone turn, or perhaps even just using those as, as a bluff opportunity, where it's going, you know what, I might be able to handle it. Probably not. Maybe I don't want to. Just maybe trying to send Pavel a mixed signal about his hand. And so you were talking about how you like the synergy between Doomsayer and Antonidas. How do you like making your opponent pass twice because you have two Doomsayers and then just straight up coining out the Antonidas? I think it's very good because Orange does not have a direct way to deal with it. His yeah. ways to deal with it uh, is a lone copy of Snap Freeze in combination with another Freeze effect or Conjurer's, it's Conjurer's Calling, Calling which right. I really don't want to do that to a 7 <laughs> exactly. card. You would love to see that as Pavel. And I imagine that's been his game plan for a couple of turns now. Unless he finds anything better like a, a Mountain Giant off the top. Akin to the secondary and tertiary decks that you have uh, in Specialist here, Archmage Antonidas is very much a secondary or tertiary game plan. Beautifully phrased. Mm. As Orange at this point, literally just has, to, just has to throw cards out of his hand to make sure he's not overdrawing, because he really wants to get through to that Conjurer's Calling now that he has Kangar. We are approaching some pretty scary turns for Orange, though, as <laughs> now Pavel ends up drawing a Mountain Giant, and perhaps that changes the game plan. It has to be Giant, right? Because, I, yeah, it's definitely Giant. If, you're, if, if there was no Snap Freeze in Orange's deck list, I think you would actually very strongly consider Archmage Antonidas. But because it's a one-card combo, or with any freeze effect. He's very likely to have a freeze effect as well. I suppose a two card combo. You've got to just go for this. This is just way more powerful. And so now the question is going to be, is the Doomsayers enough to actually keep Pavel in the lead in this game? Because Orange's hand is still fantastic. I mean, we're looking at Mountain Giant, his own Conjurer's Calling. We're looking at two copies of Mirror Image. We're looking at, oh my goodness, this hand this is, is insane. Insanely powerful. So now he just needs to set up for Whoa. Giant. He can Giant Sorcerer's Apprentice Conjurer's Calling and then rip Ray of Frost and Mirror Image, if he wants to. And then on the following turn, if that Sorcerer's Apprentice is still alive, which a lot of times it will be, you get to okay. Cadgar, uh, Conjurer's Calling, rip your bananas, mana cycle. Like, this okay. turns are insane! Right, right, right. But, th but then we need to consider if Pavel is able to clear the two minions that come off the Conjurer's Calling, then your Cadgar that becomes much less powerful. That's so hard That's to That's so do, unlikely, though. yeah, yeah. I, I agree, because that has to be double Snap Freeze. Okay, I, I like going for the Giant this turn. I was, I was like, considering, can he go for stalling on this turn and setting up into Giant Conjurer's Cadgar on this following turn? I, I think here for Orange that the Sorcerer's Apprentice taking the risk on it too is quite good, because if this fails, you need to have a backup plan. The Sorcerer's Apprentice getting checked, you're not worried about that. You're very worried about the Giants getting checked. I like this a lot. And he's going to come out way ahead in this one with the double Ray of Frost to freeze. And now Pavel is under the threat from three different angles because he knows the two bananas are in hand. His minions are threatened to get value traded and Conjurer is calling to replace them. However, he does just have his own Cadgar's Conjurer is calling into double Ray of Frost as well to freeze both of Orange's minions. Yeah. You this game is insane. You can't predict that from Orange. You just have to hope that's not there. So if he does go for that, his board would be full, or one off, one off of full. So he could still play the Sea Giant, but he wouldn't have enough mana if he wanted to go for the Ray of Frost as well. So he could either choose Ray of Frost or Sea Giant this turn. You could go halfway too. You could play Sea Giant, one Ray of Frost. You know, the important Ray of Frost target, I think, is the Mountain Giant. If there's one thing I know about you, Admiral, it's that you're a fan of, of half and half. Yeah. I have it in my coffee every day. This is so many. Cadgar is insane. It's absolutely bonkers. What's weird to me is this a card you like you don't want to keep in your hand, but it you have situations like this, like and this. it's like, yeah, that's ugh. the best card they've ever printed. <laughs> yeah. So how, okay, but Orange now has his own very strong counterplay. These minions were not removed, so we can see Cadgar conjurers. Frost Nova to freeze everything that Pavel has in play and then just push for lethal the turn after. That's what I'm looking at too. It's banana up to make sure that you trade efficiently. Lovely. Reflect. Something's got to give. <laughs> Someone's dying. This, these are the kind of mage mirrors that I was looking for. 
big dumb stuff. Just explosions. Like, look at what's happening this game. <laughs> yes, exactly. I couldn't have put it better myself. And four spaces exactly. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to look to play Mana Cyclone on this turn. It does get him a couple of activations. I can see Frost Nova trade in with the Apprentice, then Mana yep. Cyclone. So the banana point, does the does the banana matter anywhere? Uh, I mean, Khadgar's done his job. You don't care about Khadgar living. Yeah, okay. Yeah, banana one of those, so it punches through a Grave Harbor. Sure. Yeah, I like this a lot. Let's reload for the following turn. It's only getting orange three spells, but those three spells could be absolutely crucial. Oh. Awesome. Pavel looks gassed. It did not work. So what does he do now? He has Ray of Frost. I die, I guess. So you, <laughs> you can freeze three minions on this turn with Snap Freeze double Ray of Frost on three of them. So Ray of Frost, Ray of Frost, Snap Freeze, Mana Cyclone? Yuck. That's kind of what I'm looking at. But How much mana does that leave you with? One, two, three, four. It uses six. Okay, so you can't even go Frost Nova afterwards if you were to get that. <laughs> I guess it could get you another Ray of Frost in the absolute dream. I, I honestly, looking at the hands face up even, getting to this point, I couldn't have told you who had the edge. <laughs> Because yeah. it, it's just such an explosive measure that takes place. Like, you, you, this is the kind of things you see with like token matchups where both players explode onto the board, and then you hope that one of them doesn't have the big buff card. Yeah. These aren't just tokens. These are eight eights and seven eights. Oh, sorry. The the twins. Sorry. The it was not a twin spell. Oh. Variant of the the ray of frost there. So instead, just having to go with two activations, manages to kill off the Cadgar, which is nice. But we are looking at a fairly large amount of damage and, and another Frost Nova. Well, no, it's not lethal. There's two taunts there. Yeah. But another Frost Nova is basically lethal. Trade banana, double buff the mana cyclone. Uh, Pavel, Pavel can't get out of this situation. No, it's he lethal. It's lethal. It is just lethal. He can buff up the uh, mana cyclone twice and ping the 7 5 ah, by you're right. in. And then he has 23 damage exactly. Wow. It's exact lethal. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> he sees it. Of course he does. This is Orange, the world champion slayer here in Grandmasters. That's like Jamie Lannister. <laughs> Except it's probably not quite such a, a blight on his honor. Orange is... I don't consider that a blight on his honor. He did the right thing. The Mad King is insane. But <laughs> Orange is definitely handsome enough to also take that title of Jamie Lannister style there. Boom! He continues 100% win rate versus world champions thus Snap Freeze and a big game hunter. I'm going to say something crazy here. We've talked a lot about deck building and how I said, uh, you know, one of those situations we got into was I was talking about Hunter and I felt the deck was too clunky. You had mentioned that as well. We pinpointed turn two as a weakness and we we initially had surmised perhaps Secrets would be the way to shore up the, uh, right. the Hunter's early game ability. Turns out it was Headhunter, Satchet, and Scavenging Hyena. But two drops. Okay. Just stuff I'm, you can I'm going to sound crazy here. I'm going to sound crazy. Go for it. You need to fend off aggro decks, right? As mage. Frost Nova and Doomsayer, ways to do that. Right. But in the mirror match, it became quite apparent to me that freezing the board is paramount. Absolutely. Fr what Frost Novas are insane. What about Blizzard? Well, that's actually where things get interesting because there are... I played against lists at the moment that are, in, uh, to all intents and purposes, freeze mage. Uh, you've been playing that deck a little bit as well, which does play the... Uh... Mine was janky. It was a burn version. But... Right. Well, no. I mean, there are people who are playing the burn oh, version. Oh, just actual burn version. Yes, they're just playing Freeze oh. Mage. I can't remember who it was that was talking about bringing it. it was, uh, I couldn't remember if it was a Grandmaster or someone who was just considering bringing it to one of the Open Cups going on at the moment to qualify for Soul. But basically, it's floating around in the ether. Some kind of a Blizzard uh, Freeze mage type thing. Uh... <laughs> I have no idea if it's good. Maybe we'll see players slot it into this um, Mana Cyclone Mage. I imagine that that's not the optimal way to build it, even if you're expecting a lot of mages, just because it's so expensive and you can't develop at the same time. This is a very interesting outcome here for Orange. So Orange on coin this game, magic trick on turn one, finds uh, Astral Rift. Is that the name of that card? I always forget the name of that card. Uh, you add yes. two random minions yep. to your hand. Like, just two random minions. Doesn't matter what they are, though, in this instance. That service is like an arcane intellect. Yep. And now he has the option oh. 
to get a giant in play. He could do it even before this, right? He had, that's a four mana giant at the moment. Obviously, we unfortunately can't see the mana cost, but nine cards in hand, that's had he four drawn, mana giant. Yeah, had he drawn the second evocation this turn, he would be able to, but now he only has to use one evocation to yes. do it. So he did not know that he would been, he would have drawn this, obviously. He didn't know he was able to play it, but taking the Astral Rift gave him the ability with the current hand he had to play the Mountain Giant. I appreciate the, the effort there. Uh, observers to try and guess if you on the, the mountain giant there. But yeah, we can see here Orange able to throw it down. And if he picks up a Conjurer's Calling as the next card with Khadgar in hand, the game ends on the spot. That is it. And Pavel here, you know, with the opportunity to play Doomsayer, this is the situation we were talking about in the previous game where if you play the Doomsayer before your opponent uses a Conjurer's Calling, they can conjure is calling your Doomsayer, but that's a play that they have to yes. actively contemplate at that point. Which means with only four mana, they would not be able to do it on their own giant as well. Correct. So they expend the front half to give you minions, which gives you a chance to check the giant. And so for this turn, Pavel has a number of options. I think he could build board tension with Sandbinder. I think it's risky, but I think you could do it. I think you could play Doomsayer and Mirror Image. I, I think that you can do a number of crazy things, like just go for a big mana cyclone turn. Well, I don't know what Pavel should do. I think that's honestly what he's looking at. Because, I mean, this is a... Is this a good mana cyclone turn? I... You have to spend a, pretty much your, all your cards to do that. Because the thing is, this is not a particularly good mana cyclone turn with Sorcerer's Apprentice. You're going to get two, three maximum with double evocation spells played. But if you go for Doomsayer and uh, the Mirror Images on this turn, you will have less cards to go for it the next turn. And therefore, because of that, Pavel is just launching off with a full uh, exploding onto the board here and getting as much stuff as he can to try and draw through his deck, I suppose, with randomly generated oh. spells. Look at this. You play the Doomsayer as well. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I was... In addition to all this stuff, that looks wacky, though. Well, it means that it, your opponent can't go for Conjurer's Calling, which would basically end the game on the spot if they did. And he has Sandbinder follow-up anyway. I think this is good. So he, go, he goes with this play because he knows that he's going to be picking up something with a Sandbinder, and then you're trying to take advantage of that initiative? Like, that, that just feels so weak. Do I like this play, actually? Because I, I was saying with this line of play, he has the follow-up of Sandbinder. If, if Pavel had just gone for Doomsayer Mirror Image, and it works, which it usually would, he can still just go Sandbinder next turn. Does it usually work? Observe well, how do they kill off the Doomsayer? Reflect. If they conjure so there's two copies of Snap Freeze, and there's Conjurer's Calling. I feel like that more often than not, the Doomsayer actually gets checked if you play it by yourself. Really? I think percentage-wise, it more often gets checked than not. I think Orange would very heavily consider letting the Giant die because he knows that Pavel does not have the mana to play his own giant on the following turn. And he doesn't want to... I feel like that's a reason to to keep the giant around. Okay. It's... It, it, it's weird. It's I, very weird. It's very weird. And for Orange here, I think you're really going to consider playing Illidan either this turn or the following turn and using your spells. Does Arcane Fletcher say whenever you play a one-cost minion, so summon a, whenever you play a one-cost spell, summon a minion, or is it the other way around? Whenever you play a one-cost minion, draw a spell from your deck. Right. Whenever you play a one-cost minion. Yes. It's a weird card, right. but... I was. I think I had it the other way around. I had a hunter get that um, in a... I don't even remember what happened. They somehow upgraded to that. Like they, oh, that was a rogue. A rogue had evolved that from a witchy lackey. Right, okay. And then they just started oh, playing lackeys. That's and sick. I immediately lost the game, as you can imagine. It was basically Miracle Rogue Plus. Wow. Maybe that card's just good. But at the same time, maybe it's not. As Orange picks a gambit to try and get Illidan Storm Rage onto the board. We've already seen it do an awful lot of work so far today in Grandmasters. Yeah, I am a bit curious about Orange using it immediately because I feel like his follow-up turns were quite strong with it as well. Like being able to play it this turn and then just simply coin a mirror image. You open your opponent to playing Sea Giants, but you have Frostova and Snap Freeze in your hand. You also have Cadgar to go with the, uh, the Illidan on the following turn, which I guess is why he went for this turn. If it pays off, he gets to go Cadgar and start playing cards. Yeah. It's close because I, I'm having to shift my mindset over to a mage deck that can actually remove single minions because the majority of the time when you're playing on ladder, there's no counterplay. When you play a big minion, they just have to freeze it and freeze it and freeze it and try and develop their own stuff. Whereas now with double snap freeze in both players' deck lists, 
maybe coining out the uh, the Illidan Storm Rage there. Even if it wasn't hit with a Polymorph that was randomly generated, we can see there was still another answer to it in the form of Double Snap Freeze. Again, this this matchup is proving very interesting. Yeah, it's like this, these are the games where you have things like Snap Freeze in your deck for mm. is when you don't get ideal draws. I mean, you're not always going to have Giant Conjurers calling. You're not always going to have big C Giant plays. Sometimes you're going to have to fight honestly. Believe it or not, shocking, I know. So in this situation, what it feels to me is that perhaps taking it a little bit slower has more merit because Pavel has shown he doesn't have explosive turns. And Orange, his explosive turns got checked. I think that perhaps a shift right there would have been very timely. Slow it down a little bit. You still have snap freezes. Yeah. Take your time. It's going to make a big difference over the course of this game. Uh, because if Orange had managed to stick that uh, Illidan Storm Rage, or even just go a little bit wider on board with it, we would be worlds apart Ooh. in this game. Wow. Cadgar Mirror Image discounts yeah. them by five, five. mana. Which but you only have four mana this turn. Four, yeah. So not playable on this turn. However, next turn, and with Frost Nova and Snap Freezes to back up, I feel like Orange, you know, maybe now with that aggressive stance starts to look a little bit better. So how does the mana shake out? You play three mana the next turn, which would bring you down to five. So they would be playable, or one of them would be playable next turn, sorry, with Khadgar Mirror Image. This is Sea Giant. This is assuming that Pavel does not add minions to the board. Right. Which, you know, he's very, very, very likely to do. Ooh, Frost Nova burn. That's actually, a bad burn. You that can, can see critical. Yeah, you can see it on Orange's face there. He did not want to lose that one. Picking up the uh, the big game Hunter, however, could be a pretty crucial pickup on this coming turn. I mean, Pavel took Research Project there. It's a very little benefit to Orange because Orange, you know, the next two cards are burning off. Yes. He effectively gives Orange one draw in that situation. Well, he gives him no draws because he would have drawn up to ten next turn. Oh, anyway. yes, Pavel had, I'm sorry, because Orange had nine cards in hand, yes. Yeah. And so Pavel now, I feel like you can use the first giant as a checkpoint. Okay. Because you have the second one. However, he really needs to find Conjurer's Calling. He really does. But I you mean, can't Arcane Intellect again this turn. Both players do. This is one of those well, you can. where neither players find it. I don't know about that one. He's just not playing the giant. And he's very possibly going to overdraw him. Oh, no. He is going to overdraw here. And Spellbender was an option as well. Spellbender's a good card. I think that was a My miss, uh, a bad choice there. You have to think about the way it works, like Ray of Frost, you know, those weren't in the initial Conjurer lists, where Spellbender was super powerful against the, the specifically the Conjurer Mage. They didn't have utility options. I mean, even against Ray of Frost or Snap Freeze, if they're not freezing a giant, that's worlds apart. It changes the mana break point. Absolutely. Like that. So it means you can just maybe push another eight damage to face. Well, Pavel didn't add a minion to board. And, you know, there are benefits to that. Obviously, Orange does not have strong reactive plays now because Pavel has not done anything on that last turn in terms of minion development. And we're at that point where, like, if you go one giant, one giant's not really enough. One yeah, giant's actually, like, be almost away. begging to get tempoed in some way. But both players here are just not drawing the cards they need. So how does Orange counteract that? Are we just going to see a cad? Or we could just see a single mirror image plus sea giant on this turn, which I think is much more palatable because one of the weird things about the mage mirror is that Cadgar mirror image is a play you rarely want to go for because four minions on your side of the board that you cannot kill off can be absolutely devastating. I feel like in this situation, Orange is not happy with it, has to do something. And it still ends up being pretty good against Pavel. I mean, Pavel only has one copy of Sea Giant in his deck. The problem is, he has the Sea Giant right now. I actually don't think I like this from Orange. I think I would rather have seen the one, the no Khadgar, just Mirror Image, and the Sea Giant, because I believe one mana for two minions re effectively reduces the cost of the Sea Giant by one. So even though it was nine mana, he could have still played it for seven after the Mirror Image. And I think that just leaves more board space on his side of the board. It makes Pavel's Sea Giant cheaper, or uh, which he obviously does not want to do. And having the Khadgar in play on this turn, it doesn't really do that much because he doesn't have the Conjurer's Calling in hand. So I, that's kind of what I'm thinking about, though, is that Pavel doesn't know that. And I think that with both players being fairly deep uh, okay. in the deck, okay. Orange is really representing Conjurer's Calling here. That's a good point. So perhaps. rather than Pavel exploding onto the board, perhaps has a big interest in trying to check the Sea Giant. But then it gets more interesting because even if Pavel does believe that Orange has Conjurer's Calling in hand, 
If Pavel just doesn't kill off any of the mirror images here, Khadgar has no effect. The Conjurer's Calling is just a regular ah, Conjurer's yeah. Calling. Excellent point. there's no room on board. But now your opponent doesn't have the room on board. And their Khadgar is hanging. And you've checked the Giant. And this is exactly what Pavel is doing. I think this is a beautiful punish of Orange's style of play here from Pavel, of just not attacking with Do the Sandbinder. Does it efficiently punish, though? Because this is kind of what Orange wanted, was slower development from Pavel. Well, all it means is that he didn't kill off a mirror uh, image there, which I think is that fine. Must yeah, because Orange's hand, as you said, it doesn't have Conjurer's Calling. He doesn't care about the board space right now. This is interesting. Super interesting. The beast, they must Whether or not Orange intended this to be a bluff scenario, it was a bluff scenario. I guess, but I, I just think the downside of Orange's play of going for Khadgar into Mirror Image is going to be haunting him for the rest of this game. Pavel is not messing up in killing oh, these boy. minions. Ooh. So what are we looking at now for Pavel? This is like a... I mean, for Mountain Giant, Frost Nova, Sea Giant. It, yeah, in my perspective from Pavel's end, what I want to do is I want to force removal from Orange with Giants, and then I want to follow up with Art Mage Antonitis and oh, okay. generate value. I mean, the game has gone at such a slow crawl that I feel like you're free to, to make those kinds of plays. Oh, I wonder if we see Art Mage Antonitis on this turn then, because... You can see that as well. I mean, you can see Arc Mage, Mirror Image, Sea Giant yes, very exactly. easily. Yes, exactly. That's very interesting. It's not a line I was looking at originally because freezing this board is not actually that crucial, I would say. Yeah, the freeze is going to be in tandem with killing the Sea Giant. Okay. So if you play with Mountain Giant here, you obviously have Sea Giant as, as a target. Yes. Perhaps. And Pavel perhaps still shows no interest in clearing off these zero twos. He's expending a lot of resources here. He's going to run out of m removal eventually. And I wonder if sticking Archmage Antonidas on that turn was the way to just pull ahead on board. He could have also played the Sea Giant. I think you got to get some removal from Orange first, though. Like, you're only going to get one fireball, and I feel like you want the Antonidas to paramountly oh, stick. Yeah. You already got two fireballs with the Mirror Image and the Snap Freeze, and then Sea Giant as well. It's true, but then you're using a removal spell for the fireball, which the fireball then will later be aimed at a sea giant. Well, no, no, no. I, I, I think he could play the Archmage Antonidas that turn, the turn after frosting over the board, which he would have kept in hand because he hadn't played it, and then just launch fireball's face because he has a oh, pyroblast in hand as well. Yeah, literally just go for the win with Archmage Antonidas on the following turn. Because again, Orange still has a board full of mirror images. He cannot develop. He is, even if he had the Conjurer's Calling, he would literally be unable to. <gasps> Look at this. Look at this. What a great use of the Ray of Frost there. Pick off your own minion. It's smart. Not exciting cards picked up for the Mana Cyclone, though. It's damage. I mean, oh boy, oh boy. Pavel requires oh. assistance indeed. Ooh, that's not a bad card. And look at the timing here for Pavel as well. Both big threats down simultaneously yeah. with backup. And look at this hand. This is. I mean, this is Freeze Mage. Doesn't this take you back to the past? Pyroblast, Fireballs, and Blizzards. And all generated. And right now, Orange's board is so very weak yes. at best. This is the problem with his line of play. And generally why you don't do this in the Mage Mirror. So it does have Frost Nova. Must does have Sorcerer's way. Apprentice. I mean, he can get some work done here, though. I'm not convinced that... that Orange is out of this just yet. No, no, neither am I. He can trade off a lot of minions here, start developing some pressure of his own, but... How? How does he even develop pressure here? Step one, Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yep, that Step two, good. Frost Nova. Step three, kill Antonitis. Or kill the Sea Giant and then Someday figure out like how the rest you. is working. But stuff's oh. got to die this turn. 
And honestly, Frost, I think, is yeah, when my head's up. Uh, with this kind of board and this hand, I do feel like there was uh, some interest to Astral Rift there. Like, you need a long shot to win. I think I like this more. I think it clears off the board. Because now for Pavel, he went for a pretty strong Gambit last turn, and he does have a large amount of damage here. It's not enough to actually win the game. Even double fireball ping into Pyroblast, assuming neither of these two secrets from Orange is a counter spell, that's still not lethal damage. That means slow it down then, right? But how do you do that? Like, if Pavel goes for Blizzard, that's terrible. It literally clears off board spots for Orange that he wanted to clear off himself. I mean, the rest of Orange's hand is randomly generated spells, though. And Pavel knows that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, both players' hands right now is basically just randomly generated cards. I mean, this <laughs> except for the fireballs, which are, you know, very intently generated. Look at the difference between last game, where it was explosive all the way through, giants coming down, Conjurer's Callings, Cadgars for both players. This game, is this a double miss on both Conjurer's Callings? Both players have callings in the for bottom seven for Pavel and bottom 10 for Orange. And all the big stuff has now been expended. Yep. Pavel's gonna use Cadgar as a 2-2 two, two for pressure. It checks the secret. Check for mirror entity, yeah. Explosive runes, explosive runes isn't there anymore, is that right? Yeah, yeah, it's gone. So he's ruled out mirror entity. Yeah, he's worried about counter spell. He's obviously worried about counter spell, yeah. You don't have a choice, bud. I think you're honestly fine if this gets counter spell good. And he's gonna start the push for damage. I mean, he's hoping that this is not a mirror, uh, sorry, a, um, uh, ice barrier. I don't think he'll attack face. He's two not. pings and, and spells away. <laughs> I guess that's just his game plan. Like, this is coming down to literally good old school freeze mage launching fireballs and pyroblasts to the face and praying that Orange cannot find the pressure he needs to counter it. I mean, Archmage is getting the job done this game. Like, yes. Pavel knows that there's not a counter spell down. So I think there's a high likelihood that he launches Pyroblast here so that Orange cannot randomly generate one and stick a counter spell. Beautiful. And yep. then after that, you have ping with fireballs and then a ping. Which wins you the game. You just fight for board after that. <laughs> it's getting so close now. As Orange finds cards that are less than less than ideal, it's I It's pressure. I mean, the unpowered steam bot is not pressure. Sure, right. but... For three, four drops, six it's, attack is a little unfortunate. It's funny, the zero nine, I think, is actually directly a liability because it prevents yes. Pavel from ever being able to attack you. <laughs> That's true. He can't <laughs> he mess can't up. Make the mistake. These are the training wheels for him. <laughs> Pyro does pick up Conjurers just after his Cadgar dies. From now on, Pavel has one game plan and one game plan only. So there's two things at play, actually. Number one, Orange has Zilliax. Uh, no, it's taken out. Uh, for the Snap Freeze and Big Game Hunter. No way. He does not have even have Zilliax uh, as an out to draw anymore. You are correct. There so is literally no healing in the deck. So Pavel's free to just Pyroblast face and then go into ping, double fireball, and then ping. Have both Mana Cyclones been played as well for Orange? Perhaps there's a magic trick left. Yeah. Yeah, Pyro face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the easiest turn to get the Pyroblast in. You know no shenanigans that happen, and you have to have that resolve to win. Mirror image is a nightmare draw here for Orange. He's got Arcane Missiles and the uh, Cinder Storm for nine, or oh, sorry, eight extra damage from hand. This is 22 over two turns right now. That doesn't do it. He needed an Orange Conjurer's Calling or something to throw down there. Again, from Pavel, by going for the Pyroblast first, while we both agree it was correct, it was a pretty heads-up play. Like, it was showing, or a face-up play, I should say, rather, sorry, showing exactly what his game plan is, because Orange knows that the two Fireballs are there. Good old damage. I've missed this. And I believe Pavel should be launching the second Fireball. It doesn't Absolutely. really matter, though. Absolutely. I mean, you have Ray of Frost to check for count. It, just, it doesn't matter. We're, we're at the point of your opponent has to get, like, what, what uh, off of Kundra's Magic ball. Trick, Astral Rift, Unseen Saboteur, it casts the Fireball. Your second one you get is Alex Straza. Interesting. Sure. That's a sequence of events that could occur. So go ahead and fire. So you fire. <laughs> so now we're looking at Kundra's call outcomes that heal immediately, of which I don't even think there are any. 
because lifesteal minions obviously need a turn to get ready. None have lifesteal and charge now that the uh, uh, Knights of the Frozen Throne is gone. And I think Orange is going to realize here it's going to game three. Well done. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm not even sure if that is the best way for Pavel to go about it. There are a couple of turns where he can conquest as we've used in the days of yore. Uh bullet style of uh, secondary and tertiary decks. But game number three is here, and we have orange on coin. And Pavel, uh, you know, I imagine these cards are getting pitched away. And for orange, probably hang on to that Conjurer's Calling, but let's talk about the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Okay, so this is kind of the, the thinking we've been seeing a lot, or I expect to see, I should say, going forward with Mage, where as players are taking more and more heavily to deal with Mage, we're seeing big game Hunter thrown in for orange to deal with those giants, as you can see there. Uh, snap Freeze thrown in for Pavel to be able to deal, again, likely with those giants to be able to kill them once they're frozen. The thinking I imagine would be that you start to go for wider boards of smaller minions. As we saw in our first game of the day, for, for Hunter Ace, it was against a warrior, but his strategy of just going nice and wide on the board was looking very, very strong. And I think that's what Orange is going for here. Good hand from Orange, too. Right. Sorcerer's Apprentice Banana Buffoon. Uh, it acts like a, like a bootleg Houndmaster uh, <laughs> in a lot of regards, but it is a, so. it is a one-two punch that for me has been very effective at at tearing opponents apart. It's true. If it gets if it goes unchecked, you're you're in very good shape. It's just going to be looking very powerful here, as I imagine Ooh. Pavel will be unequipped to deal with, what would that be, a 5-4 Sorcerer's Apprentice hitting him in the face on turn two? I was just about to say Icicle. I was looking at this card in my collection the other day, and I went, I forgot this card existed. Two damage to a minion. If it's frozen, you draw a card. Would you consider playing it? I would, you know, I really thought about it. Really? Because because I, I just really didn't want to use Novice Engineer. I... I, I have to be honest, with Icicle, even though I don't think it's a particularly powerful card, every time I get it off of a randomly generated spell, I'm underwhelmed. It just it, okay. it does not do what I want it to do it in this compute. deck. No, I'm like it it draw it's like two mana deal two damage draw a card is obviously powerful, but the fact that you have to expend a freeze and then like in mage, in the mirror specifically, once a minion is frozen, you can kind of just ignore it for a turn. Pavel goes for the hero power and preserves the Ray of Frost, and this could get ugly. Ooh, this could get very ugly with the Mana Cyclone picked up off the top as well for Orange. Yeah, I mean, Orange sits up in his chair. So that Icicle... Can't... Do you ever sacrifice the uh, the Sorcerer's Apprentice here? So, like, let's just say you Banana Buffoon. Oh, no, surely not. You Banana Observe once at least, right? Well, okay. Reflect. Could Banana Buffoon double buff one of the two minions and then Icicle it afterwards just to get an extra spell, but I imagine that's just not worth it. So, Banana Buffoon, play both minions here. Coin. <laughs> play both things. Coin. Elemental Evocation, Mana Cyclone. Hmm. I, I'm kind of interested in the in this Icicle now. I could see using it on a Banana Buffoon. But right now, you're getting two spells, then three, four spells. You get five spells with a two-card hand. I think I prefer just throwing your... Just, just getting your stuff on the board and going nice and wide. I think I want the coin. This is what I'm thinking. Okay. Wow, I would have instantly thrown in the coin there. That is interesting. I think the coin is more powerful than a random spell. Here. Fair enough. The some, coin is good. Some of the situations I'm thinking about um, mostly involve like big game hunter turns. That's true. I think that's something that I consistently mess up with this deck is that it is not strictly good to get more activations with a mana cyclone. Yeah. Obviously, if you have Questing Adventure or Vex Crow in play, then it becomes much more appetizing because you're getting a, a kind of tertiary benefit as well. See so uh, a number of players with Questing Adventure in their list this week. Uh, yeah, was it? I think Tice was one of the players that stands out to me most who brought the uh, the Questing Adventure tech, which I know Viper was saying on Twitter. He thinks if you're teching for the mirror, you should be putting in those kind of cards. Mana Worm, uh, Mana Addict, Questing Adventurer to just throw them down early, and Mage can't answer them. Yeah, I mean, it's really tough to answer that for Mage. You know, like right now, I believe that uh, Kalento is the only player who's got a Frostbolt in the main deck. Job done. Yikes. Yikes. I'm scared for Pavel. Okay, so how does Orange push this advantage that he has now generated by tempoing out his minions in the early turns? Um, 
Obviously, the sand binder to find a mountain giant is looking pretty tempting over the next couple of turns. Yeah, I think you, I think you're pretty free to just uh, to head base. Cool. I wonder if you ever do something crazy like icicle your own sorcerer's apprentice because it's gonna die. <laughs> it draws. Oh. It's not the stupidest thing you've ever said. I'll give you that. <laughs> it's close. It's up there. There must be a way. I don't know. So how much? How many? Cards is he out of this turn? So he's at eight now. We'll go up to nine next turn if he plays the Sandbinder. I mean, he's definitely veering towards that line of play. You can see it's just the most obvious one. Oh, Obviously, if he gets uh, the the one-off Mana Cyclone, which he's you know, unlikely to get, he has to change game. I, I'm pretty interested in trading the Mana Cyclone here as well because Pavel set this up to use a Hero Power. Make him use that Hero Power. Yeah, that's where my head's at. Cool. I agree. And for Pavel, that means, I think, use Blast Wave. Uh, is there any way you can preemptively stop what your opponent is obviously trying to do, which is Mountain Giant Coin Conjurer's Calling? Yeah. You have the to answer is <laughs> this, this does stop Mountain Giant Coin Conjurer's Calling because you killed the Sorcerer's Apprentice. The Pyroblast shows up. <laughs> <laughs> we know Pavel's win condition. <laughs> Yeah, Pavel and randomly generated mage spells for the win. <laughs> Name a more iconic duo. <laughs> and for Orange here, I think some pretty good. Uh, Observe again, and like reflect. Perhaps unintentionally, but bluff opportunities with uh, with splitting image. That's interesting. Because there's, there's not really a lot to do this turn. Splitting image is so rarely as good as you would like it to be, especially in this oh, yeah. matchup. I think where they have uh, snap freezes mm. teched in as well. But if you can find that opportunity for splitting image to work, it's insane. Because right now that represents mirror entity, it represents counter spell, and it would represent spellbend. Spellbend is yeah, spellbend is scary in this matchup. The rest of the secrets, you know, pretty unimportant. Yes. So, at a certain point, you know, Pavel's going to be able to narrow it down quite a way. But I could totally see that changing uh, a couple of his plays. And I think Orange on this turn is wondering if he's allowed to just play Conjurer's Calling you know, instead of the Giant. I was just thinking that yeah. too. I like this. Oh! That is Rift a massive up. outcome! No, the Violet Teacher! He just turned two attack into seven attack, and one of them threatens to generate value! Okay, here's the interesting thing. Could that Violet Teacher be a hindrance rather than a benefit? It could be. But I would say when you have full control of the board and you're heading into a Mountain Giant Conjurer's Calling turn, yeah. probably not. I'd say it's likely to be better than it is bad, but we did see Orange suffering from board, oh, space, just board space issues. Um, and obviously the 1-1s one can attack in and sacrifice themselves off, uh, whereas the 0-2s could not. But even then, on the turn you're playing these spells, it could get a little bit annoying. But for the moment, Pavel does not need to worry about that kind of nonsense. He needs to be thinking, Hold up, I'm just kind of being I killed here. That needed to be a giant. That really needed to be a giant. Pavel's in trouble. A very, very slow turn they're coming in. And now Orange realizing Mountain Giant into Kundra's calling this turn looks a little bit more juicy. I think this was great patience by Orange. He didn't leave himself vulnerable to Snap Freeze killing off the Mountain Giant last turn. Well, I, I also want to commend Orange for, um, I guess, his impatience on the matter. He I'm conjures so calling a Sandbinder. Well, no, I love that. I, th I think it was exactly the right thing to do. That doesn't feel patient to me. That feels very like, give it to me now. I want it immediately. No, I think the opposite. I think he's holding back on playing the Mountain Giant, which was the very, very tempting play on that turn. Because he realized if you hold up and you're patient, you can go giant Kundra's calling on the next turn, and you end up with a board such as this, whereas a couple of turns ago it was a 2 2. I guess we're looking there at. There was a, no counterplay. We are looking at it a little bit differently, where, like, on, on the one hand, using the Kundra's calling on your on your four cost minion yes. is it, a form of patience. You hold it, the giant. It was less greedy. I'll give you that. His play was definitely less greedy. Yes. Which is good. That's the, that's the signal I was trying to send. Okay. Less greedy. There we go. Right. Which is obviously not always the way you want to play Hearthstone. Being greedy a lot of the time is the right way to outvalue your opponent. Uh, the Mage Mirror is not about value. It's about just making explosive turns that your opponent cannot deal with. Board. Yeah. Get the board. Get the board, get the win.
Mage Mirrors feel to me less like a, you know, a long, drawn-out uh, bout of boxing and more just like a, a duel with swords. Someone's going to die very quickly every time. Unless you forget to bring your swords, which is kind of the equivalent of bottom deck in Conjurer's Hall. <laughs> or a mountain giant. I guess so. Maybe Pavel, oh, yeah. just take a page out of Orange's book, though. Just hit the 2-4 with it. Clearing up the board, trying to reduce the cost of Sea Giant, and does not even oh, want to no. play the mirror images. Oh, no. Wow. Whoa. Sometimes. Whoa. As you were kind of saying, though, the Violet Teacher... Liability. Mm. Kind of a liability at this point. You'll go to four minions when you cast it, you'll go to five, six with the giant, and then you would go to six minions when you cast the next one, which means you... Does he miss out on a giant? Oh, you don't miss out. I think he's still okay. Dang it! Just about. I thought I was a genius. <laughs> <laughs> you thought wrong. Uh, yeah, he's fine. <laughs> he's totally fine. <laughs> you couldn't play the Sorcerer's Apprentice with it, though. That's so true. I wonder if he's... Hmm. If he'd got a Grave Horror, I wonder if he would have thought of going for Splitting oh, Image, just because it all, uh, makes it more likely uh, you get the, uh, the uh, duplicate on a big minion. He might be going for it anyway. Because it looks like he's eyeing the Icicle on the Interesting. Sorcerer's Apprentice, I think very wise. I think what he's seeing is that there might just be zero benefit to it, but if your board's full, when you have splitting image in play and your opponent attacks, nothing actually happens in that first spot. But your opponent's first two instincts are going to be to trade trade over the one ones. Pavel draws Mountain Giant. <laughs> that we have so important. Cadgar with Conjurer's Calling on it. Yes. And he can even. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. How does he do this? So he's got eight mana, which is exactly enough for Giant Cadgar's Conjuring. But he can Scorch, Elemental Evo. Wait, he goes Elemental Evocation, Giant. Scorch with the opposing Giant. Double trade in, Cadgar's Conjuring. Do you need that extra mana? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You do. Do you need that to play the Scorch? I think I'd like to play the Scorch on this turn if I was Pavel. Yes, killing Mountain Giants, good. Perfect. Let's do it then. Oh. But he needs fortune here. Without good fortune, he's done. Yeah. Right, exactly. Good point. He needs to get the Grave Horrors before anything else can happen. 25% chance to lose the game on the spot here. He's defended. Does he get a second one? He gets a second one! So now Big Game Hunter... Like there's, the, there's no outs for lethal here, though. So now he deviates away from the Scorch plan. He's not playing the Scorch to go for mirror images instead. But by actually, by trading into both of them individually, it means that the value trade line is closed off. That's exactly what, what Pablo was thinking about. It's a disruption effect on... on Orange's huh. turn, rather than just taking the clear play of killing the Observe giant. That's smart. That's very smart. If Pavel had run into a situation where he did get uh, four Grave Harbors, yeah. I think he would have been considering killing a giant face-up instead. But perhaps wow. perhaps not. Perhaps you still do go for that line. That's very interesting. I, I like his thinking, because even if you kill one mm. giant, the fact that he could trade in and then double conjurers, or even just single conjurers, one of them, is really scary for Pavel. Oh, is Orange cooking up a Blast Wave turn here? Oh, would you think so? It was just the way he was pointing the grip. Yeah, there, the, I mean, the uh, middle 7-8. It kind of looks like it. I was looking very much at a big game hunter turn and just kill off everything. Um, because I think it looks like he comes out on top there, but that's, that's what it looks like to me as well. He doesn't have any threats in hand, so maybe he is just going to go for a big Blast Wave turn. Oh, this lets him get the Conjurer's Calling in as well. And he gets his own Grave Horrors! Great big taunts there. So he's under no pressure, but Pavel has three instances of Conjurer's Calling. But because Orange went for the Blast Wave play and slightly damaged Pavel's minions, now Pavel cannot go for the value trade into Conjurer's Calling route. This is feeling like players, both of these players are really beautifully realizing a subtle aspect of this matchup which is not allowing your opponent's Mountain Giants or Grave Horrors to value trade into your ones. And so for Pavel, does that mean you want to go maximum Conjurer's Calling 
or do you want to trade one of these off and ping? I, I want a maximum Conjurer's Calling. Me too. I think this is the point where you just need to go all in here. He is so massively defended. The only thing he needs to be afraid of is if he goes for double Conjurer's Calling on Grave Horrors and gets two sets of Mountain Giants. But I guess he could just Conjurer's Calling the Mountain Giant that comes out of the Grave Horror instead. Or just stop there. He doesn't even need to go for the third Conjurer's. could go for a Scorch instead. I I am a bit worried for Pobble now. I actually may have stopped at the first one. Ah, he's going to Frostbolt. So he Frostbolts to stop any crazy shenanigans. It's like a big game hunter fireball uh, would be enough in that instance. Right. Yes. Smart. So there is so much back and forth. They both have so many ways to keep checking this. Blizzard coin big game hunter is not a possibility yet. But Luna into double freeze is looking like where Orange's head is at. Sources of Apprentice 2, why not? Let's just get all this stuff down. And it seems insane that such unbelievably high amounts of attack value are being thrown around in this game, but neither player has died so far. Behold the tools of creation. Another Frost Nova! Saving the magic trick as well to put the uh, discovered card on the right hand side is beautiful Another as well. Frost Nova! Oh, he can just freeze forever. So now he just needs to develop onto board. Does he play the Winter's arcane here. intellect? <laughs> I like the arcane intellect. I think that's smart. If you want to draw through to your power cards, which are not those. He needs to hurry a little bit though, because he still has to expend a card. Behold the tools of creation. Yep, 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 yep. What a turn there from Orange. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Powell saying, good is not good enough. Let's turbo this board to an unlosable position. And while he's able to kill off the last good Conjurer's Calling target for Orange, what he does not know is that he's not going to be attacking with these minions for a very long time. Oh boy. Oh. And Orange was still, I think, quite a bit of removal in deck to get this job done. He is kind of just running out of minions, though. I mean, I've got the he'll get them. They're in the deck. Like, there, there's another mountain giant, I think, in his deck, or just a sea giant, or just anything that he can throw down here is perfectly reasonable. There we go. Yeah. There we go. That is And huge. a snap freeze. So Sea Giant coin Frost Nova is possible, or the other way around? Yeah, it works out the same. But that Sea Giant needs to come down. Unless he wants to go for Sea Giant double Frost Nova, uh, double Ray of Frost. So I'm thinking the Ray of Frost is going to hit one of these minions, and you actually trade in the Sorcerer's Apprentice after you do all this spell shenanigans to set up for the Blizzard clearing it and punching through on the following turn. He ha he knows that there are no more Conjurer's Callings in hand for Pavel. He would have to get one off the top, or I believe he's expended both in his deck anyway. Not for the Sea Giant. He's trying to get him the chip damage instead. He's threatening lethal as it stands. Pavel has to take defensive maneuvers now. And Orange now instead can just go for a double Sea Giant play on this turn. Yeah, I mean, if Pavel wants to defend himself, oh, you like have to Doomsayer, and Doomsayering your own Giants is not a very good idea. Right, and Orange was thinking the whole time that he is afraid of Frost Nova Doomsayer, which is why I guess he didn't want to overcommit too heavily. That's exactly right. But now, however, Orange is saying, well, you know what? If you've got it, you've got it. I mean, Orange uh, doesn't even need to use a Frost over this turn. Even then, actually, if he goes for double Sea Giant on this mm. turn, on the following turn, if Doomsayer does come down, Blizzard double Ray of Frost ping would be enough to clear it off. Yeah, and Orange is going to use a Frost over here because he doesn't want to see a I Blizzard like or something yeah. from Pobble's side, like a Flame Strike or a Blizzard or what have you, and then the Sea Giants get traded off. He wants to continue the aggressive route. It's going for burn. Okay. So that's a single ray of frost. It was not a twin spelled copy. So 
for that. Oh, right, sorry. Okay, so we couldn't have gone for that. Okay, then, then I'm fine with this. Oh, boy. Just stuff. Just stuff. Orange just has a lot of stuff. Double C Giant coming down with a blizzard to back it up in case he gets frozen out again. Pavel's done. He doesn't have a freeze to go with the Doomsayer. Oh, That's yeah. it. He throws it down. And in this unbelievable mage mirror that we had, Orange comes out on top, keeping his one